Hello again, this is Dr. Valerie Nelson. I'm a board certified natural doctor and my website is drvalerienelson.com or our website store is doctor spelled out val, V-A-L products.com. I've always wanted to do a video where I was able to show some of the things in nature in the summertime, but um, I guess every year the summer just swept me away and I never got a chance to show you all the flowers that are all around us and plants that are actually herbal medicine. So I don't actually go out and pick these plants and boil them and everything uh, because you can easily find them in capsule form. But I wanted to go through some of the ones that you can find, some, some of them you can find them driving along the road and some of them are simply like in my backyard and I bet there are things that you didn't even realize were healing medicines. For one is, this is such a common plant um, in landscaping in the summertime. The flowers are so gorgeous, they almost look fake. Um, many of you would probably recognize this as a hydrangea bush. So the hydrangea plant is actually, again, you can buy it in capsule form. The most common thing that we use it for is um, for kidney stones. Actually, it's part of our kidney stone program. If somebody has a kidney stone and we're trying to get them to not have to have a surgery or try to get through the pain, one of the things um, we will have them do is take up to nine hydrangea caps a day to help break down that kidney stone. And we've seen that work time and time again over the years. It's amazing. So who would think that God gave us such gorgeous, beautiful flowers and they're actually um, medicinal. Okay, this one surprised me. We have these growing all over the place. These are Rosa Sharon. They are a type of hibiscus plant. And what made me do a little bit of research on them is I noticed um, that a lot of the healing plants will just grow like um, abundantly. You know, people are out in the, in the springtime and they're killing the dandelions, for instance. And I'm like, yay, I love the dandelions, because I know dandelions are like such a great liver purifier. It's, we're, not, we're out of dandelion season now, but everybody knows what a dandelion is. So people are out taking toxic chemicals and killing all the dandelions, where I'm just like thankful to God that we have dandelions, and I'll go out and sometimes cut the leaves, clean them off. Anytime you do any kind of herbs, even from outside, you gotta make sure you clean them, because you just never know if a raccoon came up and peed on them or something like that. So you wanna make sure they're clean no matter what. Uh, but the Rose of Sharon's, they're so gorgeous, and they just grow like crazy. And we have the, the bushes, we have some in our landscaping that the bushes are like 10, 15 feet tall. Jenna, can you point to over to this Rose of Sharon? With the camera can you see how tall this bush is i mean this is a rosa sharon and they'll grow i don't know if you can get a sense of how huge that is compared to me but um you can actually I learned you can actually take the flowers and you can cut them off and you can um eat them in salads and that they have some medicinal um aspects to them another common landscaping flower this time of the year is echinacea or better some people know this as cone flower but it kind of looks like a gorgeous daisy turned upside down where the leaves are growing down. And echinacea is a really popular herb. It's in um, one of the formulations that I developed called a Wellness Booster that we use as a natural antibiotic that doesn't do damage to, to the intestinal gut bacteria. So it can be used for colds, flus, viruses, any kinds of infections. Um, but echinacea is one of the ingredients and you guys probably never knew that this is actually what echinacea looks like. Okay, I get a real kick out of this one. Um, years ago when I was studying herbology, I, um, I started recognizing some of these plants outside. And this one grows, it's July now, so this one grows right along the sides of the road. Um, the road. Look how tall these all are. They'll shoot right up. Matter of fact, I want some of these over my hillside. Um, Jenna, can you get a uh, view of the hillside over there? Um, I'm actually going to paint plant what most people would think are weeds. I'm going to plant some of this mullein over the hill just because I love to be reminded of um, just the medicines that have been left for us. But anyways, mullein, um, some of the things that mullein's used for is it's most commonly in respiratory formulations and it's a common ingredient that you can see in some skincare products. and 
ear and um, eardrops to kill off um, ear infections but aren't those cool they will actually grow like yellow flowers on top of them but you can see them growing all along the hillside here in Pennsylvania okay so over here I have some red raspberry bushes grown in my backyard so you can actually take the leaves of red raspberries and you can make them into a tea red raspberry um, is known to work good for canker stores for cold sores for leg cramps any kind of issues with menstruation and it's actually in a lot of the formulas that you can take the last six weeks of your pregnancy to make your labor time shorter so it's a great herb for um for women actually so you can so sometimes at the end of the season or at the end of summer i'll just get some of those leaves i'll pull them all off and those are ones that i will tend to use sometimes i'll just dry them out on a cookie sheet and, and then I can just crumble them. Sometimes you can put them in soup. Sometimes you can put them in salad, um, spaghetti sauce. And they crumble up and they almost look like parsley or oregano. So you can use them in any of those recipes that you would use um, parsley or oregano in. Burdock, um, let me see. One of the other ones I want to talk about is burdock. Because I know I have some burdock grown right over this hill. I'm just going to get some burdock. I'll be right back. is known um, again for liver purification and it's also a very common herb that's in a lot of these anti-carcinogenic formulations out there um, it's just really really good for the immune system but the way you can tell what burdock is if you have a dog and your dog runs out in the woods and they come back and they have all these sticky velcro -y kind of things all through their their hair then you no doubt know what burdock is. It'll have, it's a little thistly thing. The bugs are getting me now. Um, a little thistly thing and it has a little purple top on it. I don't know. Are you able to get that in there? Okay. okay. And what I remember when, as a child growing up with a child growing up with six brothers, my brothers thought this was very, very funny and my mom could have just about choked them. But, and I had no clue that this was medicine. They would get a big wad of these and make a big burdock uh, Velcro ball because these things stick together. And they would chase us girls down and try to hit us in the head with them. My mom was just about ready to choke them. But, and, and it was no fun for us either. We would try to run them. Instead of getting snowballed with them, we'd get burdock balled in the summer from them. So anyways, um, so those are just a few of the um, healing plants that are around here. There's so many more, but I thought it'd be fun to share some of those with you. And again, um, we do. I do phone consultations across the United States, even though I work out of Pennsylvania. Uh, my website is drvalerienelson.com. Web store is drvalproducts.com. And uh, appreciate your time.